welcome back to the Feezy Build channel. So, still at the shop. Like I said, I was gonna shoot consecutive videos, but didn't make it nearly as far. And by the title of the video, you can probably guess what we're doing. So, you wanna shut up, door? Wanna shut up? Sorry about it. We have a crazy windstorm, like always, Washington. But here, let me explain this while the wind calms down. So, you got your Mac 4 port, right? Um, first things first, you want to mount that thing. Uh, you want it to be sturdy. You don't want it to be flopping around. These little mounts, they're universal. You can buy them for like $16 off Amazon, eBay, just about anything or anywhere. They're super easy. They have two bolts, little flush mount bolts. I know I got mine bolted on, but like I said, I already had this all the way together. I pulled it apart real quick. That way I could shoot a quick video and show you guys because mostly routing them is what people want to know about but this is a big deal too so let me see i got i think i have another one because they sent me two this is a little aluminum bracket that they send you it does come with uh two rubber grommets and all the screws and everything you need um to put it on right so conveniently enough on an eg there are two holes right here at least there are on mine on my uh uh, engine mount tower so it, it literally fit perfect this isn't for an eg but it worked perfect i have snap lock fittings that's another thing you guys might want to invest in you can get them really cheap on amazon they're like 30 dollars for the kit um, the way that they work is real simple and it, it saves you time and just blowing off vacuum lines and having to rip them off all the time or cut them it sucks you know you bust your knuckles whatever so the, the way that these guys work is they have a little uh, bearing or whatever teeth inside here. When you pull down, that releases the vacuum line. So to install your vacuum line, you have your fresh cut, you come over, press it in, boom. Things not go nowhere, locks in. Plus the nylon line like that is way stronger than the old school rubber tubing that we all use. So here's pretty much a little diagram um for what you need to do where it says a on your gate or on your uh, mac control you will run that line to the top of the wastegate top fitting right sure where it says b on the mac solenoid you will run that sil that that line to the bottom of your wastegate right there for reference for the whole thing to work for intake pressure, you'll run the line from the part that says intake on the side of it all the way up to your intake manifold. Reference it anywhere that you can from the intake manifold. Maybe you have it from the turbo down here. I have a T on mine because I'm running the uh, blow off valve from the same one. I know it's kind of ghetto, but that's what I have to make it work. So. I have all my lines pre-cut. I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to do this one-handed to show you guys how easy it really is, comparatively speaking. So, A's in there, comes down. A's gonna go to the top of the gate. Push it in, give it a little tug, make sure it's in. This was my pre-cut line for B. Clearly, you guys are gonna have to cut your own lengths, whatever. Like I said, this is just for the purpose of the video. B, right in there, give her a little tug, make sure she's snug. Come down to the bottom of the gate with your B, plug her in, bam. These fittings also, as they are tight, you can adjust, you can move the uh, fitting to where you want it. So I want mine down because I'm going to be running these zip tied together somewhere around this part. So clearly the intake part is being referenced to this little nipple off the intake manifold. And then I have my super duper long guy. This is gonna go all the way underneath the intake manifold into the blow off valve. So once again, push in there, 
snug, like a bug in the rug. We're gonna take this. Pull. That guy you were just listening to, he was wrong. Not 100% wrong, but it's me from the future here to tell you that things did change here. So, um, let me show you. I'm not 100% where I left off in that last video because I shot it quite a bit ago, but I know that I have changed the routing of this. Now, I might have said that we wanted to cap this guy off, the exhaust port. Not the case. Um, you actually want to leave that open to the atmosphere. If you were to cap that off, you will just leave your gate open. It will still regulate boost, but it will be open the whole time so you will have two exhausts. Uh, so we don't want to do that. So what we did here is we just did a 90 off the intake. We came right here, cut the line, and put that little T in. Now this T has the source from the intake manifold, but it also goes back over to the blow-off valve. So before, I believe I had some kind of doofy T here, one going to the intake manifold, one going over there. Wrong. Um, so for wiring this guy, I... I don't think I went over it in this video at all. So we're going to go over that real quick for Honda's uh, B series, D series, H series, pretty much all the uh, USDM ECUs and the JDM ECUs. And I'll throw in a quick bit on how to do it in the K series as well. So if you're looking at your Mac 4 port, you're probably trying to figure out which wire is the signal and which wire is the power. Well, these are not polarity sensitive, so it doesn't matter. You can choose. Um, what I have found best to do for these, because all the wiring is there, it looks clean, and it just it just works out, is use the EVAP canister, uh, the purge valve. So on most Hondas, you have that little charcoal canister, and this guy plugs into that little purge valve on the top of it. Now, this is already wired back to the ECU, of course, and it has two wires, both what we need. But the head can't plug into anything, and I see a lot of guys just solder these together which works perfectly fine. I want mine to be a quick disconnect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and solder on one of these, I believe they're like a Deutsch plug head. Um, I just got this from AutoZone, they're like $6. That way I can solder one half onto the uh, Mac 4 port and one half onto the stock harness. And I can actually service it at any time or if I need to replace it, I can cut and solder the new wire onto one side, plug it right in, no issue. So. Plus, I think it'll look much cleaner. Um, now, although these are going back to the ECU, the two pins from the purge valve, they're not in the right location. So just like doing, um, you know, a VTEC conversion, whatever, you, you have to move the pins in the ECU. So where we would be doing that is moving those wires from wherever they're at, which I still need to figure that part out. To on my ECU because it is USDM. Um, we're gonna put the red, the positive, is our 12 volt to the A25, and we're gonna use that yellow and black wire as our signal. And we're just gonna move those pins from where they already are on the ECU clip over to where they need to be, these two pin outs, and uh, there you go. Boost controller wired up. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Now if you do have a JDM ECU, you would have to go your positive to A26 and your signal to a A17. The K series are quite a bit different, but still the same layout. You go to A2 for your positive and B21 for your signal. So there you go, guys. Pretty simple. I'm going to go ahead and solder these up and then I'll show you what it looks like all said and done. So we got that all soldered up. Um, the next portion of business that you'll have to do, since we tapped into that purge valve, um, you'll only have to change one wire. So you would go to your ECU connector, I'll show you guys what we're talking about, and go to the uh, A20 connector. The A20 is the purge valve, it's a single wire. I know you're like, oh, there was two wires, how come there's only one? Well, it draws its power from the main relay and not the ECU. So you only have to uh, move the signal wire, which is that red wire. So you come back into the car, you got light on for you guys. And 
you open your clip. Now these are real easy to open and, and shut. You can see the little sides there. You just take a flathead and pry them open. Boom, boom. And you would come over to here with the connector in this orientation. You count. Starting one, two, three, four, all the way to 20. That's the 20 connector. So we're gonna move the 20 to the 11, which is this guy right here. And we're gonna act like I didn't have to cut the wire because I couldn't get it out and tap in a new one. Um, luckily for me, I had a spare harness laying around, so I had this guy just kind of kicking it. Um, in your case, if this happens, you might have to go to the junkyard. Who knows, you have spare parts. But this pin was really hard to get out, stubborn on mine for some reason, so I just went ahead and cut it and changed it over. Now you want to find the orientation of how it goes in. And this one goes in between these three connectors. I think it goes sideways like this. Nope. Alright, hold on for a second because I only got two hands. I'm going to set you down and get that plugged in. Alright, so sorry about the poor lighting, but you can see that we have that A20 pin, the red wire, soldered to another head and pulled over to the A11. Now that is all that we need to do for this portion of the wiring of... Sorry, I don't want to blind you guys. Bam, bam. That'll be it for the portion of the wiring of the Mac 4 port. The next part would be hooking up your ECU and actually triggering the solenoid so that you can hear it ticking. You want to make sure that your wiring's all good and everything's straight. So clearly I can't do that right now. I don't even have a battery in the car, but when I do, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So I hope that helped you guys out. Here's the final product. You can see how all the lines ran. We have our plug-in back here with the Deutsch, and we have a little like 3AN uh, hose clamp holding it up so it's not vibrating or getting in the way or anything. Nice clean look. I'm real happy with the outcome. I know it's gonna work. It's what we do for all the other cars. So if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more content, and I'll catch you on the next one.